Welcome to the Conscious Marketer Podcast, the place for conscious entrepreneurs, teachers, healers, and authors who want to expand their reach and impact in the world. Join us and meet leading experts where we talk all things conscious marketing, launches, storytelling, and other strategies to help you serve more people. Find us at ConsciousMarketer.com. Welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Richard Tobinger, the CEO of Conscious Marketer and the host of the Conscious Marketer podcast. And we appreciate you being here today. I'm also joined with my co-host, Kylie Slavek. Today is actually her birthday. Happy birthday, Kylie. Thank you. <laughs> We're excited to have on an amazing guest, Garrett Atkins. Garrett's going to be talking to us today about creatives to increase impact and incomes is like such an important topic. Welcome, Garrett. And running an agency, having good copy hooks and creatives really is a key essential ingredient to reaching the people that you want to serve. Before we get going here, let me just share a little bit about Garrett. He's an expert in e-commerce creatives production, social media, influencer distribution. Garrett's also the founder of Impact Media a digital marketing agency supporting impact-driven businesses and helping them scale revenue and change through social media, content production, and paid media. Their work aims to uncover what makes your brand special and ensures it reaches the people who need it most. And today, Garrett's going to be talking a little bit about uh, developing and testing content to increase conversions developing different hook points for your creatives. This is one of uh, Kylie and my favorite talking points, uh, different forms of developing content, and then you know, kind of the difference between using organic and paid methods to test and scale businesses. Hi, Garrett. Thanks for being on our podcast today. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. Before we get going, kind of we always ask people to just tell us a little bit about, about your background and how you kind of came to start impact your impact agency and kind of where you came from would you mind sharing a little bit about your personal story yeah of course i mean we i think if anybody's listening to this podcast they understand the importance of storytelling and honing in what that hero's journey is that they've they've went on and it really extracting that over the years and understanding like what's brought myself to this point has been a fun process but originally from west virginia and this is where our headquarters are based now have an amazing community. West Virginia is a beautiful state. But the more I kind of entered the internet world, I would learn more about meditation, spirituality, figuring out who this Alan Watts guy was, just different self-development practices. And that all came from people freely sharing through blogs and through websites um, and just sharing online. So really just started going down the internet rabbit hole. And that opened up the doors to um, environmentalism, self-development, spirituality. Um, finishing up school, I decided to buy a plane ticket at 3 a.m. at night to go down to Costa Rica and really just like put myself out there and say, okay, I'm going to meet the universe halfway and see what it has to offer. I have some ideas of what I want to accomplish in business, uh, marketing and storytelling, but um, I'm just waiting for this perfect opportunity. I need to just jump right into it. So through that travels alone, it really opened some doors and some incredible connections um, and a lot of great teachers in internet marketing, um, storytelling, self-development that have developed over the past four or five years, even meeting uh, Kylie down in Costa Rica for a mastermind where we originally met four years ago and really focused specifically on social media and content development. Myself and a business partner at the time were making connections with a, large, with a lot of larger uh, media outlets and self-development and spirituality and helping these brands that have a very large following connect with conscious businesses um, to help promote and run campaigns for them. So there's a lot of incredible businesses, teachers, healers, products that were making incredible impact, but they weren't always able to reach their ideal audience. So we we're just becoming this attention broker and bridging the gap between um, these outlets with large audiences and offers that can really support them that didn't rely on these media outlets to rely solely on Google ads, but they could form deeper partnerships. Fast forward a few years, um, as of November 2019, right before the world got, got flipped upside down in some ways, uh, we officially launched Impact Media and we're a, a team of 10 half based in West Virginia, the other half in Montreal and a few others spread out. 
and we're really focused still on this this focus of self development, environmentalism, um, health and wellness, uh, working with brands to help them really focus on their content development and how to reach their ideal clients. So this is a mixture of organic social media, content development, and paid media to really make an ecosystem that is front of funnel and, and driving traffic and um, getting their stories out there. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I even love the name of your business, Impact Media, because you know that's what these people want to do. They want to make an impact and you have to figure out a way to get them online. Maybe just a starting question, what are there some of the different ways that maybe a more conscious business might kind of market online versus like a traditional way? Are there some things that you found that have helped your creators go out there and create before we dive into some of the, you know, some of the more, maybe more technical ideas that we had talked about? I'm just kind of curious if you had some thoughts on that. Yeah. I mean, there is, I would say one thing is just to start in a sense is like start put pushing out content, start testing, start learning what works for you. But a big hidden, hidden secret and advantage that's helped me a lot is really simply networking and finding communities that are on a similar path than you or are speaking to those audiences. Um, there's so many people that are open to co-creating content together, to sharing ideas. That's one of the first steps I would recommend to people that are on that journey of not only see how you can just start pushing out content to hopefully reach people, but really start building up your network of people who are looking to achieve the same thing in the same industries um, has worked really well and has uncovered a lot of uh, learning curves for individuals and connections and opportunities that you wouldn't have been able to see. But starting creating connections, joining communities, getting involved has been a great way to start the journey of that first thousand true fans. Yeah. And for those who may not know the Thousand Street fans, that was an article by Kevin or is it Kevin, Kevin Kelly. Kelly? Is that right? Yeah, Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly. Uh, you can Google thousand true fans. And basically the premise was if you had a thousand true fans that paid you like a hundred dollars a year, then you'd have a hundred thousand dollar business. And so it wasn't as important that you had like 10,000 followers, a hundred thousand followers. It was just that you could find a thousand people who were so hungry for whatever you put out and could see value. And so the idea was just create your thousand true fans. It's a, it's a, it's, it's still a great concept. I still love it, you know, and then that's the base where you grow, you know, you can grow a multi-million dollar business just from that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, it just, just shows that no matter what you are focused on or what you truly geek out on or passionate, passionate about, you might think, Oh, there's nobody that is very specific on what I want to bring into the world that, with the power of the internet and um, all the technology that's coming uh, to us, it's, it is, a, there are those people out there and they're, they're waiting to be reached. And it's also, I think, a, an important aspect to make is that sometimes you get really caught up and you have to reach a million people. You have to have this 100,000 list to really get anywhere. But if we're overlooking a lot of that, that groundwork of connections, setting up 15 minute calls, like really really learning and really taking the time to have conversations. There's so much power to be uncovered with that. And I know that that's a part of your all's process as well as doing interviews with past clients to really uncover how they're truly feeling. And we've become so caught up in our business and really living the life 24 seven, that it's great to step back and see that perspective from somebody who's has fresh eyes and what they're what they're truly looking for. And what language they're even speaking. That's amazing. One of the things that I just connect with you so much on, and you know, we hung out in the middle of the ocean and talked marketing for like four hours. I think I might've gotten a sunburn, but uh, one of the things I, I just connected with you that day about, and just ever since is your commitment to everything you've been talking about. A lot of people talk about conscious marketing. A lot of people talk about environmental sustainability and social justice and things of that nature. And of so many of the people I know, you're you're living it, like you said, every day of your life, you're living it, you're breathing it. And, you know, I've also been doing this for most of my life too. I mean, I, I was like a little protester when I was in middle school and then I got into spirituality, but I've always been asking myself, you know, how do I make a difference? And, you know, I found that in digital marketing because I realized I could reach the most people that way. And you and I both know 
that in order to get a message like that across, because a lot of people don't really want to hear it, you have to have a powerful hook or I know our friend Brendan calls it a hook point and you wrote hook point on your little questions, but this is one of my favorite things to do. And I think in a single day, I probably have to come up with 10 hooks because email subject lines, getting people to click in an email, you know, read an ad. So will you explain to the audience what a hook or a hook point is and just also how you come up with them? Yeah, so a hook point. And knowing that we're in the, the, the world of social media, we need to understand how important is the first three seconds of seeing a video or the headline of an email. And it's just the world that we live in that we can really only have a short amount of time to really pull somebody in to our ideas, to our business, and this sea of communication and conversations and ads that are out there. So hook points really help you dial in in a, an effective way to connect with the audience. Um, whether they're experiencing a pain point or whether it's something about your business or whether it's something about your product, for example, but just a way to connect instantly and that you can really hold in, that you can really grab their attention with. Because a lot of the problems when it comes to marketing that I, that I see and even in day-to-day communications is that we don't have that clarity and being able to communicate um, very effectively a very powerful statement. We get, we get speaking and we don't, we're not really able to grab somebody in because they're really not sure what we do. So when a hook point, um, it wants to be in, engaging. I like to be like very specific with it. Um, if you can say an exact number of 300,000 plastic bottles end up in landfills every day or something along those lines to initially grab somebody's attention, that is a great, great place to be to pull somebody in. And then you want to just focus and understand on what the audience, who the audience is that you're speaking with. So you can understand what is really going to pop out to them. Is it about the environment? Is it about their health? Just understanding and meeting them where they're at. And again, just reiterating that you want to be very specific or find a stat or an emotion or um, a very clear way that's going to stand out to somebody that they can instantly connect and create that emotional connection for themselves. So it has to be specific and and vague at the same time because you want it to be powerful and you want it to make a statement, but also you want somebody to connect with it and have that personal relationship to be together to see themselves like, hey, I do not want this to affect my world in this way. Or hey, I've I've experienced that emotion. I can put myself in there. I am that person. But hook points and that initial grab of attention, that powerful statement to pull somebody into the rest of your marketing message and understanding your brand and then sharing more of your story and what makes you different and what makes you unique besides just a long list of product benefits. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, Brendan, who wrote the book Hook Point, says that we have less than three seconds to get somebody to pay attention to the rest of our content. And I think it's even less than that. And I think as time goes on, it's going to continue to shrink. You know, there's 60 billion pieces of content uploaded to the internet every day. So, you know, one of the things Brendan says is like, you're not competing with people in your niche, you're competing with every single piece of content uploaded. And I don't love the word competing. But it is what it is, right? You're, you're, you're in a sea of a lot of content. I also think of in terms of hooks is framing it in the positive. So a lot of times when we're talking about things that are hard for people to hear, Mike Hill introduced me to the concept of too much pain. And uh, if there's too much pain for people, they'll kind of shrink. So, you know, one of the most popular things that people know about environmentally is the 16 year old who figured out how to rid the oceans of plastic harvesting wind. Like that's something a lot of people know about because you feel like you can win. Like you feel like if he wins, then you can win. And I think that that's something that is so important. One of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, books is winning the story wars. And he talks a lot about that too, where he talks about empowerment marketing as opposed to inadequacy marketing. So really speaking to people in such a way that they feel like when the protagonist of a story wins, they win too. And I, and I know that you're really, really good at that. Can you give us a couple of examples of like hooks that you've used that help people feel like I'm on the side of 
what's working and what's going to work and building a better future? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the examples or like what comes to mind when it comes to this uh, storytelling and um, hook examples is the the project that we both kind of co-worked on together with True Earth. And this is a, a, an incredible laundry detergent company, uh, laundry eco strips. And one of their goals is to rid 1 billion plastic jugs from the, which would otherwise end up in landfills through their product or services. So that's a great example right there. Trying to think of some other ones. We have another water bottle company where it's basically this this water filter is using less plastic and coconut carbon as their filtration system to rid it from other typical plastics. So Garrett, you work with a lot of e-com brands. And for those who don't know what e-com is, it's like selling, a lot of times it's selling like a physical product, like a bath salt or a candle or something like that, a fitness product. Can you maybe share a little bit about your experience in e-com and um, basically the kinds of e-com businesses that you work with? Yeah. Yeah. So e-commerce is a fun space. Um, it's this, this physical product realm where we get to really develop their content they'll send it to us. We get to play with it, explore it ourselves, um, and then get to hear in their own words uh, why they created this product and what problems they're looking to solve through the product. And um, we've worked with a lot of digital products as well, but switching since Impact Media started a year and a half ago, we have been diving more into more e-commerce brands, which is um, really exciting to grab this product, be able to develop the content for it and test different hooks um, and hook points for the uh, creatives to go out into the world, not only from an organic sense, um, from just posting to social media of the photography and videos that we develop, but also um, seeing which ones are organically winning and then pushing the paid media behind it. So one of the things we do with e-commerce in our process really is to work with a brand to really do a creative deep dive on understanding who they're speaking to, what their product benefits are, what problems they're solving, not just on trying to make somebody's life easier, but how they're making the world a better place. Similar to what I said earlier, I'm really focused with working with brands, environmentally friendly products, um, health and wellness supplements, and also self-development, spirituality products as well. So taking that time to understand that, understand who they're speaking to, these different avatar avatars that they know are in their realm, and figuring out new angles or hook points that we can introduce this product to them where one person might really resonate with this product is ridding is using zero plastic and the um, chemicals are non-harmful and you get to compost the package when it's done or somebody r might be much more focused on i need a i need a product that works and doesn't have harmful chemicals and is sensitive to my skin so um, that's a fun part about e-commerce so we get to play with these different ad sets figure out engaging ways to stop the scroll, not just with text on the screen, but the first aspect they see. And not, not only hook points are uh, developed through copy, but also is used in actual video as well. So how are we stopping the scroll with what somebody sees and making different variations to then test with paid ads to understand which one's speaking best to the audience, both on a retention rate, click rate, ROAS rate. I'm obsessed with what you just said, stopping the scroll. I think I want a bumper sticker and a t-shirt that says that because that is like my life's mission. That's so cool. Yeah, you are one of the best people that I know at content syndication. And obviously with these brands that you're trying to get into the world, you're having to do a lot of that. So I'm curious, like what types of content are you seeing that are working the best right now? On a paid sense, even on a even on an organic sense, we're seeing user-generated content work really well. I think a lot of people are, are used to seeing highly developed, like we can instantly see as consumers if a, uh, an ad is uh, shot with 6K cameras, where a lot of people are resonating with seeing somebody with a selfie style video shot on iPhone because they're more likely to just understand that the the color of the the color of the video the texture of the video they're seeing whether they're unconsciously know it or not they think this is just another post from their friends list which is going to help them slow down to grab that attention and then lead them to that process so user generated content has been a big one in the paid paid media realm that we're seeing more and more also with paid media there's been some updates with iOS 14 and 
it's a little bit more difficult to track what the, not only to target individuals, but to track what they do when they go offline. So we're, we're seeing that if we're able to grab somebody's attention and not just focus on one product benefit, but also share more about what makes the company unique, what's their story, what's some of their values, that we want to really give ourselves the opportunity to inform and educate somebody enough that they're interested enough to purchase on that first time seeing the content. So grabbing them top funnel and then educating them enough through an, an engaging video that they're in a place where they know enough to make that purchase. And also another one that's isn't spoken about a lot, I, I feel like when it comes to other production companies in the e-com space is creating a text over video or sharing an actual video that's really focused on the story and the emotional connection. We see a lot of people mostly just focusing on the product's benefits, but Kylie did an exercise that helped them extract their brand story. We helped use, we use some of that exercise to develop a text or a video script for them that was really highly focused on why they became a brand in the first place of um, one of the founders sitting with his kids, seeing all these commercials and products that are just full of plastic and thinking, hey, what kind of world do I want to leave behind to uh, my children when you start finding products that are using less, less plastic and less waste? So to kind of reca recap that is developing uh, text over videos or interview videos that are very much focused on who the brand is, the people who started this, why they developed it, and what their bigger goal is with the mission. You see this done really well with, I would say, even Charity Water, for, for instance. You're really seeing like why Scott started this in the first place, the journey of his ups and downs, and the bigger vision of the organization. So focusing on the story more and more, and the importance of why you started the, why you started the company in the first place is going to really set you apart from, from the rest of the people out there. Yeah, I mean, I think this is the new wave of marketing. And I would even say that through COVID, I think people, because of the massive number of people that went online because they had to, you know, <laughs> uh, I think people's buying habits changed. They started to order more online and they started to really look for the stories behind the companies. And basically, I think the brands that have really shown and accelerated it are those that have led with story and and they talk about their values. I, I think probably sometimes what I see is creators, they, they're like, oh, I'm going to tell my story once on a post or something. But then, you know, it's not uh, perennial content, you know, it's like expiring content. And they're like, no, I already did that like last month. But a lot of times there's, you know, if you're doing things right, then you're gaining followers and people every month. So it almost has to be built in on a perennial basis. So like every new customer that comes in, like, let's just say you have 100 new people a day, they need to hear the same story, whether it's live or in an ad or... Can you maybe comment on that a little bit? Because I think that that's one of the, I think, I think creators don't realize how often they need to tell the same story over and over and over, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could, you could take up to like 16 touch points for, before somebody's ready to make a purchasing decision. And it, you know, it's, it's good to continue to reemphasize of what hooked them in into the first place. And not only to say something about the new followers that you're generating, new audience that you're generating. But also just on an organic front, it's becoming more and more difficult to reach people. You're only, you're only reaching a small percentage with each post you're putting out there, um, strictly speaking about organic. And um, you want to give yourself that opportunity to be seen to the new audiences and also pre-existing audience. Maybe they weren't online for that week um, or maybe the algorithms just didn't feed that post to them. And there's a, you know, there's a thousand different ways to share your own story and understand your content pillars and what you stand for. And to explain that with different life situations that you've been through while still continuously and, and not even just trying to explain it in new ways, but I think even what Richard's saying is like, even say the same story over and over again. Like I've seen the charity water story multiple times and I'm still blown away with, with what that brand stands for and how it was, how it was created. So um, it's important to continue to retell that for multiple reasons from an organic about how, how much percentage you're actually reaching to the new audience you're bringing in, the amount of touch points it takes to really build that connection. 
And I'll say that on it as well from not only reinstating or restating your own story, but I also want to use it, this opportunity to speak to people who feel like somebody else is in a similar lane or trying to solve a similar mission to them, that there's going to be certain people that connect to your story and the way that you speak and the way that you show up in the world that might not fully align with somebody else who's speaking a similar, similar mission um, and a similar story and a similar goal. We need multiple people being healers. We need multiple people creating more environmentally friendly products. We need all the help we can get. And if you're holding back of thinking, no, somebody's already done that, your own personal life experiences and the journey that you've been on is unique. It's one of a kind. And the way that you tell that story and the way that you present it and the way that you create your own content and um, share, those, share those reasonings of why, why you are where you're at today and why you're looking to make this change is going to resonate with people that other people just won't be able to. I think, I think that's really a great point. And in fact, if you look around and nobody's doing what you're doing, there may not be a market actually, because there are a lot of smart people out there, you know, who figured things out. And so I, sometimes I say, um, if you look out on, you know, I just got back from a trip in Hawaii. If you look out at the waves on a big wave, there's normally like five or six surfers surfing that wave. So you just got to find your spot on the wave. And I guess an internet marketing language would, that would be find your unique positioning, you know, Garrett, you and I could be selling the same thing, but somebody would trust you and not trust me or vice versa, or they would trust Kylie, you know? So we all are going to have our own tribes and yeah, like value your story. I think what Garrett's saying here is really important, you know, value where you're coming from and Sometimes I say, you know, you don't have to be the Dalai Lama to teach meditation, you know, you, you can be a really good meditator and teach a community around you because the Dalai Lama doesn't have time to teach everybody meditation. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I can't, I can't think of a good reason why we, we couldn't use some more meditation in the world. And, um, you know, knowing, knowing that the audience that you all have, have created and the people who are listening to this, I, I know it's all coming from a heart centered place. Uh, we need more of that. So don't, don't hold back on that front. Speaking about that, we do need more of that. And I think that one of the things that, you know, our audience is working on and maybe a little hesitant about is reaching a much bigger audience. You know, I tell our clients, look, you know, our mastermind clients, look, you, you've reached a hundred people, you've reached a thousand people. Why not a million? Like when I did my first ad campaign, I reached millions of people and I was just a poet who didn't know how to upload a photo, you know? So it's really, really possible these days, especially more than it's ever been. Even 10 years ago, it wasn't this easy. So I would love to hear from you about finding a winning idea, finding a winning story, finding a winning product, whatever it is. How do you bring that to market fast? How do you scale? I think that there, there is some, some front work to be done with understanding is there a market for it and also having that impact. I, I tell people I've, I've worked with people on the startup level or starting their personal brands and I'm saying like, while you're developing this course or this idea or this product, who are four to five people that you can help today to start testing it out, to start getting that feedback, to start solving that problem and then bringing it to the to new levels, it is about just like really honing in on that hook point, on that personal story, what separates it, what makes it different, and then using the tools of Facebook ads or influencer distribution, which is what we've done a lot in Impact Media, to really find the, the microphones and um, the strategy to really push this out into the world. Um, we spent a lot of time developing what the product is and what the content is, but not always how to push it out into the world. And there's tools I was saying in terms of, of the ads front and also from an influencer distribution front to make sure that you don't have the, what we call the, the digital cricket. That once you post, you've put all this time and effort into this story and product that you don't really have the, the idea or the strategy for then how to push it out. And the way that we've done it, yeah, it's, typically through paid ads um, or through distribution of larger media outlets or pages that have built large audiences 
that are very open to either doing strategic partnerships or simply doing a, a straight payment to then share across their page and build that network. And that's whenever you're wanting to do more of a, of a rapid growth. And I don't think that there's, I think that's super important and people are going to be super successful when it comes to going viral, going viral through these, these means. But also there's, there's a lot of value in, in, build, in building those first thousand true fans and making those connections and understanding that your virality might not be in terms of numbers, but in terms of uh, your ripple of impact. So it's like understanding like you're going to create those waves that are going to be pushed out through creating deep, meaningful changes for even five to 10 people. So I think that's somebody, something that people need to decide on which journey do they want to, are they, are they okay with having this small tribe of individuals and creating ripples of impact that way? Or are they looking to really reach the masses and maybe not have as close of a touch point, but reach a lot of, a lot of people. So there's value in both of them. I would say. Yeah, I think I think probably there's a fantasy too sometimes that having a lot of followers is a good thing necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> but it could also be the case that if you just could influence 10 people who went out and influenced a lot of others or those 10 people were in positions of power or whatever it is that you could have more influence and actually have a business that you that didn't take all your time so you could do other things or whatever, you know. So you have to it's just a conscious choice, right? Yeah, it's virality isn't going to solve all the problems necessarily. I think it's kind of like the we think of the the overnight success of a brand or a person is that development of their own hero's journey to come to that point where it snaps and they've tried the different hook points. They de- they've posted different stories and they've seen this truly resonates with me. This truly resonates with the audience. People are accepting this. People are excited about this product. People are excited how it's delivered. And then you can hit that that jet fuel of right. really taking it, taking it viral. But a lot of the times there's a lot of that front work to really developing a winning idea, winning hook point to then take it to, to viral. And I think it's good to, to note as well is that some people do think, and I think that's what Richard was alluding to a little bit is the people think that virality is going to solve all the problems where it's, it's, it's more of an accelerator and, and, and jet fuel. Right to a, a winning story, a hook point in, a, in, a, in an offering. Yeah, you have to have the business structure behind it. The other thing that I would, I, I'd kind of like your opinion on too is, I think my hallucination, sometimes I say that, is <laughs> that people wildly underestimate the amount of work required to create a winning campaign, you know, and to keep it winning as well. And so like the number of hours, the number of creatives, the number of things you try, could you, you know, we're kind of coming to the end of our time here. I'm just kind of curious, like, like those that do make it and do go viral and do really scale large, just because that's what we're talking about here. What kind of commitment level do they have to making that happen? And how do they, how do you see it uh, in terms of what's actually required to go all in? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a big, it's a big commitment to, to put necessarily like how many, how many hours, how much time commitment, but it is like fully immersing yourself into pushing this idea or pushing this story out into the world. And I've personally went through Kylie's process of understanding your, your archetype and what your brand represents and your story. And I think that's probably one of the most powerful processes that I've come across to really giving, like you, know, we've been saying that it's going to take a lot of, a lot of work. And I think that's still true, but there are some shortcuts in there. And I would say like going through a process like that of understanding your, your own story, um, what you stand for is going to give you that first leg. And then it's a matter of developing, okay, what's the, the different problems my offering or service is, is solving. And from our standpoint, what we do is create different creatives that will speak to maybe the product is an eco-friendly product. So we'll speak more of the pain point of let's rid the world of plastic. Or maybe more people are going to care that it, we're just not using harmful chemicals and then we're solving that problem. Or maybe people are thinking, hey, this is cutting down transportation rates and it's going to save us time. And that's what's most important to us. And we're going to focus on that. And then we test it, um, whether it's the organic front or just running an equal amount of money across the ad set, understanding what's speaking the most to the audience, and then creating further variations of that winning that winning angle 
and what's speaking to the audience most. So understanding who you are, what you represent and what your brand represents first and foremost, I think is the solid foundations to build upon. And then it's a matter of testing which hook, which angle, um, which solution, which style of communication, which social media is going to help further your cause and further your business. And there is no end in sight, I would say. It's a constant evolution. Um, there's constantly new ways to play. So that's also why it's important to do something you love because uh, there's going to be times where it's like, hey, this is really difficult. I think that's just a part of it's a little bit. <laughs> it's a little bit like it's a little bit like fitness. You should choose something to do in fitness that you enjoy doing because it's not like the workout I did this morning is going to mean anything six months from now. I'm going to have to keep working out day after day to keep the keep it in shape. And I think marketing and you know writing and showing up online is a little bit like that too. You have to every day is a new day. You have to kind of figure it out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Figure out what's, what do we want to play with today? What am I enjoying? What's the audience enjoying? How can we have fun with it? Which in one of our mutual friends, we're building our core values in impact media. Uh, one of the ones she suggested was it gets to be fun. So we're trying to remind ourselves that when we're in the thick of it, it's like, okay, why do we, why do we sign up for this in the first place? Um, how can we have fun today and enjoy it as opposed to just look at it as a, as a, as another task? What do you see as being the future of all this? I know you mentioned some different technologies that are coming to the forefront. I believe good creative is always going to win. But what are some of the trends you see coming that people should pay attention to for the future of story marketing, of content development, all, all that? Yeah, I think uh, good creatives really set it apart is like being able to push yourself out there in an eloquent way, both with copy and also with with creatives that you're developing. So imagery, videos, that's going to be really setting people apart. I would also say, and I come back to a couple more technology aspects, but um, also understanding the value of bringing these individuals, this audience that you're, that you're meeting and figuring out how ways you can create deeper connections beyond just the purchase. But how do you create podcasts or in-person events or meetups like one of the things that my career started with was this influencer distribution of taking an idea pushing it out across pages that have an equivalent of 50 million likes on them and that was really like that was a big disconnect for me um, to understand like the one-on-one -on -one connection that that was making and more and more i'm really liking the value of deeper connections and conversations and sharing more openly and sharing the change that your business is making, whether it's through testimonials um, or in-person events and bringing back a further level of community, which whether that's in person or through technology, more and more people are craving that online um, and in their life, especially out of coming out of lockdowns and everything where we're getting back to the world and we're not just wanting to just stand around or like, you know, sit in a bar or whatever it may be. I think people are more and more craving a lot more substance and connection and finding that through an idea, a business, a story, a mission is going to create repeat customers, your tribes, your thousand true fans. Yeah, winning creatives and reaching people, finding new ways to do that, but also once you have the connection is how do I make my fulfillment and how do I make my delivery and customer service incredible um, and memorable and really building a tribe other than just a, than just a transaction. Wow. That last part, that's just amazing, Garrett. I, you know, I, I like a, be, becoming a brand of substance, you know, it's like, that's a, that, that's a key thing there. And those deep, yeah, deepening those connections beyond the sale. Those are going to be some of my key takeaways. Now, if people want to find out more about you and your agency and your brand, uh, Impact Agency, your website is www.impactagency.io. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And can you just tell us a little bit about what you do? Do you have open programs, training programs? Do you take on clients? Yeah. Yeah. So we're fully focused on service. Uh, at the moment, we don't have any courses. 
per se that we're, we're pushing or trainings that we're currently doing. But what we focus on is working with brands that are in that six figure plus range to help them develop their content, whether they're actually shipping the product or coaching them on shooting their content, sending us to do the post-production, helping optimize it for social media. So focus on content production for one, also managing social media, coming up with social media strategies, and also managing paid media. So we manage Facebook and Google campaigns for our brands. So if you have an idea or concept or product that you're looking to develop some eye-catching creative uh, content around in a strategic way of testing and developing based off of what the, what the numbers are saying once it's pushed out on organic or paid media, then we're happy to have that conversation, whether it's through our website, impactagency.io, or Garrett Adkins across all the, the social media spheres. That's awesome. Uh, thank you so much for being on our show today, Garrett. You're an amazing um, kind of blend of somebody who understands conversion and split testing and have this big open heart that's helping to uh, impact the world in a positive way. So it's really our honor to have you uh, here and for our listeners. Just a quick reminder, if anybody wants to get a recording of the show, you can go to ConsciousMarketer.com and you can search for this episode. Uh, I want to thank all the listeners today who tuned into the show. Thanks, Kylie, for co-hosting. It's always awesome to have you here. And especially thanks to you, Garrett, for coming on and sharing your wisdom with our listeners. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks, Garrett. Yeah. We'll see everybody next time. And we don't run any ads on this. So all we ask is if you really enjoyed the show to share it or to head on over to iTunes and give us a five-star review. And by doing so, you help us to get the word out. You help to make the world a more conscious place and help to kind of transform business with conscious marketing and conscious entrepreneurship. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.